for today's Christmas advice, Christmas decorating part two, the decorating supremacy. So now that the exterior of your house is a gaudy Las Vegas of Yuletide iconography, it's high time we start working on the inside as well. Like most things in life, it is not what's on the inside that really counts. But if you're not going to be thorough with your slavery to the Christmas holiday, well then I might as well just call you Scrooge Grinch McAntiSanta. And you don't want to be called that, right? It's tedious and cloyingly unsubtle. Start your indoor decorating with the small stuff. Candles in the windows, evergreen doodads, porcelain snowmen, etc. One tactic for the truly committed, shovel some snow from outside into your house. Snow is, of course, the only approved Christmas time precipitation, although in a pinch you can throw some hail into your food processor. Anyway, it all culminates with the big finale, the Christmas tree. You could use an artificial tree, but using a real tree provides the added bonus of decorating something and then watching it die. It's kind of like how they put a lot of makeup on corpses for visitations. Look, son, Great Aunt Barbara looks like a whore. And what should you pretty up your tree with? Well, first things first are the lights. My advice, buy new lights every year, so you don't have to waste a day and a half detangling the tightly packed wad of lights from last year. For those who value intensity over duration, consider lighting your tree on fire. Next up come the ornaments, these colorful little orbs made out of glitter and paint and the concentrated Christmas time hopes and dreams of children across the globe. Those hopes and dreams are very fragile and easily shattered. Please be careful. From here, it's an absolute free-for-all. Some people use this golden fettuccine called tinsel, some people use ribbons, and some people use strings of popcorn. If you decide to go with the popcorn, please resist the urge to butter your tree. Another great thing about using real trees is they sometimes come pre-decorated, with exciting natural prettifications like trash bags and bird feces. And then the coup de gras, the tree topper. A star or an angel is the classic choice, but what's wrong with a top hat, a brassiere, or for the truly daring, a disembodied head? Go for the gusto, aim to please, and remember that at the end of the day, what really matters is what goes under the tree. And I'm not talking fallen needles, the shards of broken ornaments, or that squirrel carcass. I'm talking presents. But that's another episode. Thanks for watching. Oh my, I forgot I had an actual video to do here. Um, uh, good afternoon, butt kickers. It's December 17, the 351st day of 2011, which means um, it's the International Day to End Violence Against Sex Workers. Uh, apparently this is an issue. I didn't even know this was an issue. Although, to be fair, if someone is an adult actor and they dabble in the violence for thrills realm of the industry, well then I think we need to change the name of the holiday to clarify. I'm thinking International Day to End Violence Against Sex Workers who at the moment aren't engaged in sex work that hinges specifically around intentional violence. <sighs> yeah, I kinda just wanna talk about Christmas decorations again. So, how about wreaths? They're like Donuts made out of stuff you probably wouldn't want to eat. <coughs> Just 14 more of these things, Griff. You can make it. Until tomorrow, I'm Griff, and I'm still talking.